But the interesting part, too, is that once we were advised that the muggy bear was there, then we could see it. <laughs> so it's like when your seed is planted, then you can see these things. I remember years ago when I bought a, a Yukon truck, uh, I thought I was the only one that had one. I just thought it was a brand new vehicle, a new model, and the whole bit. But then when I got it on the road, they were all over the place, and there was, some of them were three, four years older than the one I had. So I'm thinking, holy smokes, I never saw those. But <laughs> suddenly when I had one, everyone had one. They were all over the place. <clears throat> So there's more going on than we're aware of, and uh, so that's why at the end of the day I had to admit to myself, you know what, I don't know anything. Or, or maybe better yet, I, I know everything, but I don't remember much. But, and then at the same time you're saying maybe we should really understand the capacities of settler um, beneficiaries completely in case there is a little skill testing question at some point? Uh, absolutely. You know, it, it just depends on if you scribe your letter perfectly, it may be accepted perfectly, but it might be close enough that it causes them to make a phone call and says, well, what makes you think you have the right to do this or that or the other thing? And so you want to have the answers to that, right? Yeah. And uh, as much information as we share from here, it doesn't mean that everyone's going to interpret it the same way and apply it the same way. So I feel that it's, it's like Jesus said, I'm not your crutch. He says, I can show you the way and give you the information, but you got to get there of your own accord. And... Uh, so I guess that's what I'm saying. It's um, if people are going to do this on their own, and I, I, uh, no doubt, some point in time, everyone's going to have to do it on their own. And we don't all think alike, and we don't all have the same information. So one has to be prepared, I believe, to answer these questions should they come. Give me yeah, a fucking answer. I think it depends on the on the, uh, the the first letter. If it's not, if it's if it's way out in left field, you probably won't even get a response. If it's close to the mark, that's when you may get this, this skill testing question. If it's right on the money, then they'll probably just do what you ask them to do. And I, I think what don't you get to, about it? I think it's important, though, to take, want it, to know it's take the perspective that we have to trust the trust. If I, can't, if I don't trust the trust, then that right there puts up a barrier. We can't see it, but it's there. They it's a law of attraction. Know that, like, like they also want to know your, it is an express trust that it's, that you're expressing it with the full intent and knowledge of what you're doing, like you're not just throwing out darts again. You're you're actually, you know, you this is really your will to express this. Yeah, in other words, you didn't read it. You're not doing this because you read it on the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so I I believe yeah that it's, it's incumbent upon each each one to get the books out. It's it's, it's a choice whether they do or not, but to, to understand the trust and the, the roles of their parties and the powers and that sort of stuff would be good to have that information from within, let alone, it, look, we're, each one of us is a, is a king. And kings don't have to reserve the rights. Kings do one thing and one thing only. They issue orders. <laughs> That's basically what they do. And when, when you think about it, when you write a check on a bank account... You're unbelievable, man. You're unfucking believable It's an order. It's exactly what it is. Courts issue orders. You go make an application for a court, whether it's a civil matter, you're seeking an order of the court. Criminal matters, this court orders that so-and-so goes to jail for six months. It's all based on orders. And the one that's doing the ordering is the one that's in charge, is the point. And I'm not saying that you have to order the government or the trustee what to do here, but you have to come from a position of, I have the authority to do this, and know why. Starting internally. Great. Well, thanks, Vic. That sure, sure helped out. And, and right. also just the part about every letter I write, I, 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 I'm, I'm putting in stuff that's too much or, or it's getting a little, you screwed me a little bit, and, it, and it's like i got to keep pulling that out of there. And, and yeah, I think that's, that's imperative. And, um, again, I used the, uh, the analogy before that, you know, people have been writing for years that, you know, equality under the law and all men are created equal. So if you start to see what's going on, that's, no man is ordering another man what to do. No judge is ordering another title what to do or man what to do. He's ordering the name. Names are ordering names, but it requires human beings behind the names to do those things. And so there's the equality. The equality is that we're not ordering a man to do anything. He's going for the right because he thinks it's him. <laughs> but the law itself is, is it's right in the law. It's, uh, yeah, uh, we're all equal, all right. But that inequality comes from our own self. Well, we think that they're ordering us to do stuff. No, they're not. They're ordering the name to do it. <clears throat> so it's okay to order names okay, because it's on. words on pieces of paper, right? You're welcome. 
Uh, Vic, it's uh, yep. Jim. Hey, Jim. Thank, thank you very much for all your wonderful input and, your, and for the outpouring of love that we received from all the participants tonight. It's fantastic. Yep, and you, and uh, thanks, Jim, for uh, offering to do this and doing this. Much appreciated. I understand we had 53 on the line tonight. So. Cool. Probably about as half as many as I was hoping, but that's okay. I was hoping there'd be more, too. But, uh, Jim or Vic, this is John in North Carolina. Would you mind uh, repeating the, the address again? I don't think he got on the recording. Okay, it's uh, 383-975-A as an apple. Elgin Street, E-L-G-I-N Street, Coburg, uh, West. Coburg, C O B O U R G, Ontario, K 9 A 5 J 4. And that's for Adam Blake, correct? Yes, that's that's correct. Okay, I just want to make sure he got on the recording because I, I think it started a little bit late. So, and again, thank you, Vic. Thank you very much. And, and Connecticut, you know, great, great outpouring of love there. Good. Um, very Good humbling. So. So thanks, thanks, thanks again, Jim, and uh, Vic, and everyone. Thank you. Awesome. Love you all. Okay, so if there's no more questions, we'll call it a night then. If there are questions, I'm here. I'll take them. Vic, I need to hear the spelling of the town again in the prop. Uh, Coburg. C O B O U R G. This is in George. And Ontario is O N T A R I O. Yep. Canada, of course. If you're out of Canada, whatever Canada is. And the um, do you need the uh, code? Oh, K9A, K9A, K9, A, K9, uh, K9 Apple, five John four. Five John four. Yeah. Thank you. And much appreciated. Any help that uh, we received here is much appreciated. Okay, well, there's no more questions. Okay, well, then, uh, thanks very much uh, for participating and being on the call, whoever's left, and um, well, everyone, and uh, we'll see you on the Internet. <laughs> love you, man. Good night. <clears throat> Likewise. Good yeah, night. love you all. Have a nice Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. Bye -bye. Good night, Vic. Thanks very much. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Love you. Love you too.